A Diploof Soweto-born innovator has embarked on a journey that is set to see young children being introduced into the world of aviation like never before, and this is through a program called AeroBuddies. With 10 years of experience in the aviation industry, Joe Palwani was recently awarded the ATNS AviAfric Innovation Award for the program that through science, technology, engineering, and mathematics will help equip young minds with the necessary skills to take on the industry. To discuss the program and how it will benefit the industry as a whole, I'm joined by the founder of AeroBuddies, Joe Palwani. Joe, pleasure to have you with us. Yes, Pratim. And I can see you brought us a nice trophy here. This is not for the work we are doing on the show, most certainly. This is yours, <laughs> right? It's yeah. an aviation award. Yes, Pratim. It's got a story to tell. Let's start there. Okay, well, this is an award that uh, has been awarded to me by ATNS. Mm -hmm. Uh, ATNS uh, holds a conference annually called the uh, African Aviation Innovation Summit. And uh, uh, part of that uh, program is the AVI Awards. So they receive uh, entries from various members of society. This year I competed against uh, professional scientists, researchers, university students, as well as high school students. And uh, fortunately, I I'm the one that I was chosen that uh, my, you know, innovation was the best out of all the uh, entries that, uh, you know, were submitted. Sure. Now, there's a bit of a story around the AeroBuddies, right? And yes. uh, also that story is linked to your own story. Your interest in helping young children take up science, mathematics, engineering, and technology, especially in the aviation field, how did this come about? Okay, Bratim, I've wanted to be in the aviation industry for, from when I was about nine years of age. I grew up in a village near Bretts called Jericho. Mm, you know? mm. And obviously, if you, grew up, if you grew up in a village, you know, there's less opportunities, less exposure. And uh, you grew up uh, wanting something but not knowing how to go about getting it. I mm. wanted to become an aeronautical engineer. Um, unfortunately, that did not happen. Uh, for various reasons, you know, uh, funding for, you know, feathering my studies, as well as, uh, you know, uh, lack of access to institutions. And, uh, uh, but eventually I went into the aviation industry, started from the bottom, worked my way up. I started out as a flight attendant. And um, one of the things that I realized when I was uh, cabin crew is that, you know, a lot of kids at the end of the flight wanted to come into the cockpit, mm. you know. And I started to observe and I saw that, you know, as the pilots were explaining to them what happens, you know, in the cockpit, you know, they could grab and understand mm. what is being explained uh, to them, you know. Uh, furthermore, I also realized that, uh, you know, uh, learners basically don't have uh, sufficient and necessary exposure into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, particularly as to how it relates to real life. Mm. And as a result of that, uh, I then began to do research. You know, uh, one of the things that I came across was that uh, South Africa was ranked number 146 out of 148 countries by the World Economic Forum. You know, in uh, maths uh, performance within yeah. the basic education, uh, you know, uh, system. And then uh, that obviously told me that you know there's a great need for creative programs. You know, to enable learners to be exposed to this, uh, uh, what I call STEM subjects, as well as to help them increase their proficiency, you know, their ability to pass, uh, you know, and comprehend these uh, uh, STEM subjects. Well, let's pause for a while and look at your own career. Here you are in Jericho, and then you develop the interest in aviation, right? It's near Brest. There's no airport there. You don't see a real live plane. You just maybe hear it flying above you, or you might have seen it on television. So how did you personally get in there and make sure that you were given an opportunity as much as you started as a flight attendant, but then you gained the, uh, the experience of flying and uh, in time the passion for it? Because you'll tell me about your own training mm -hmm. that is currently taking place as a pilot, but how did you get in there? So um, I, some years ago, I, while, whilst I was still in uh, Jericho, I asked for money from my parents to come to, you know, the airport, you know. Mm. And I took a journey all by myself, you know. I was not that familiar with uh, Johannesburg yes. and, 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 and the city, you know. 
uh, but eventually I got to the airport, you know, got to talk to a few people. I didn't get a lot of information, but... Uh, that was before how train. That was before how train. That's yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's because <laughs> anyway, I mean, recently, if you get on the how train, that is an experience uh, all of it of its own, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So, uh, so seeing aircraft, seeing pilots, you know, really planted that seed for me. The dream died for quite some time. And in the process, I started working within the non-governmental organization sector. And I worked for Love Life as a national trainer. Mm. So one day I was flying from Cape Town to Joburg, you know, and um, I got an opportunity to sit in the cockpit. And that dream was reignited. Mm. And from that moment on, everything else that I was doing, you know, was about ensuring that I'm going to achieve my dream of having a meaningful career within the aviation industry. And, and uh, currently now, after, after the time of working as part of cabin crew, then getting to uh, training as a pilot, how did that come about? So I uh, met with a friend of mine uh, uh, and we, he, wa he had already started uh, his pilot training, you know, so upon our conversations and discussions, we decided to appro approach a particular, you know, uh, government uh, institution, you know, for, for funding. Uh, it took us some time, but eventually we were able to get uh, funding for our pilot training. And uh, uh, pilot training is quite expensive, you know. Oh. Um, African Pilot uh, has done research and they mentioned that, uh, you know, you need about uh, 550,000 550, rands for your commercial uh, pilot's license as well as your airline transport pilot's license. And but how many hours must you fly before you qualify ultimately? So there's four stages you get your student pilot's license. Mm. Uh, you can think of it as a learner's. Mm. Then with that, you're able to train for, for your private pilot's license. Uh, from there, you get your commercial pilot's license. Then you can get a job professionally as a pilot. Mm. And then the last stage is your airline transport pilot's license. Uh, the entire process can take anything from uh, 12 months to 18 months, or even more than that, depending on whether you've got uh, all of that money that's required, you know, uh, at the go. And of course, you must be mathematically inclined and so on because of all the calculations you must do when you fly and have an appreciation for, for physics. Yes and no, Bratim. Yes, um, if, if you need a buzzer to go and uh, train as a pilot, you know, uh, whoever that's going to be sponsoring you is most likely to require you to have very good uh, medicine science uh, results mm. from school, you know. Uh, however, my experience was that when I got to uh, flight school, I realized that uh, people that are wealthy and they are able to afford, you know, the, the pilot training, you know, uh, they do pay for their studies, and uh, some of them don't actually have medicine science in, uh, you know, from, yeah. from school. There are guys that uh, even fly, you know, commercially, you know, who were lawyers and somewhere, and they made a lot of money, and aviation was always their mm. passion. Mm. And somewhere along the, their journey, they decide that, you know, I'm going to train as a pilot. They mm. have the money to pay, they go to flight school, they pay and they build their hours, they gain their experience and they get jobs, you know, professionally as pilots. Okay, so a person like myself, if I'm interested, I can go and do it? Yes. Please. Oh, I thought it was not for people like me. But yes. anyway, I know a colleague how, who, how, who yes. is a pilot now and was in broadcasting. Yes. Yeah. However, uh, you are correct to say that uh, you need an understanding of uh, physics, of mm. mathematics, you know, geography, and then, uh, you know, because that gives you a foundation to be able to understand, sure. you know, what you're going to be taught. Now, with that knowledge, then you said, let's start aerobodies. How, how does it apply in the life of a young person so that I can understand the program that you are running for children? What do they learn? So what we're doing, we're taking... Uh, aeronautics and aviation, mm. and we integrate that uh, with science, technology, and engineering, engineering and mathematics uh, school subjects. And in between, we're creating a extracurricular, extracurriculum you know, activities you know, to help learners to be able to see how the maths and the science and, you know, that they learn in school is applied in real life. Okay. For an example, flight simulation, one of my programs, main programs yeah. actually, is flight simulation. Yes. Now, flight simulation is known to be a game, you know, you, um, and, uh, you know, children do not have the barriers that we have as adults, you mm. know. If they come into a room and you've got, you know, something that looks like a game, 
they will go for it, mm. you know, and you will teach them, you know, uh, they will be able to understand, they will be able to grab the concepts, and then they will be able to engage in the process of flight simulation, you know. The benefit is that uh, because they don't have those barriers, you know, they learn indirectly science, mathematics, technology, and engineering. And then when they then go back to school, when the teacher is teaching, you know, it then makes sense to them that so it's, they can this, apply it, right? Yes. They can imagine it in practical terms. Yes, yeah. because these are the things that I do when I actually, sure. you know, uh, engage in flight simulation. So now, children, what do they? How old do they need to be to become members of AeroBuddies? And what should parents do if they want to connect with you? What else is there for them to become part of your program? Okay, so I cater for kids from uh, grade R all the way to grade 12. Mm. Uh, science and maths school subjects are not a barrier to uh, engaging in our programs. You know, sure. whether a child is doing uh, history doesn't make any difference, you know. So uh, grade R to grade 12, uh, we've got a number of programs. With flight simulation, we do what I call an in-class flight simulation workshop. I take the simulator to a school in class and we run through a two to three hours uh, workshop and, and that um, costs uh, 100 rand per child. Then I've got a uh, community-based flying club, like in Soweto, I'm setting up as we speak now, you know, a center, an aviation center for, for children there, you know, where kids can come before school, um, uh, even during school hours, you know, for preschool, as well as uh, after school hours, you know, to engage in our flying club activities. In the flying club, we uh, uh, train them on how flight simulation works. Once they've grasped that, you know, we then, I offer a program called a virtual uh, pilot's uh, license, you know, where they then get to learn how an aeroplane flies. How so now works. briefly tell me about the uh, camp that you will be having over the holidays. Just so, briefly. Yeah, so over the holidays, I'll be running a daily camp where, you know, children can come on a daily basis. Uh, we'll be charging 50 rents per child, you know, to engage in the program. And then every child is welcome. It's in Soweto in Deep Loop Zone 4 mm -hmm. at the multi-purpose uh, hall. A lot of activities will be taking place, you know, flight simulation as well as, uh, you know, um, rocketry, uh, you know, uh, programs and uh, aero And it starts when? Well. What's the date? From the 1st of December yeah. until into uh, January, just before the school sure. reopens. All right, uh, Joe, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Well, during the holidays, take your child to Diplof Zone 4 and uh, meet Joe Palwani there of uh, AeroBuddies. You'll get more detail and the children will get an experience of uh, av aviation. And where do they phone you, by the way? Uh, my contact number is 079 yeah. 263 3621. And uh, my email address is uh, joepresents at gmail.com. Much appreciated. So there you've got the details, but you can also check uh, further details on our Facebook page.